welcome back to the channel. I'll be your tour guide today. My name is Sean Enox. This is a slab. A lot of people have asked, requested a tour of the slab, so that's what we're going to give you right now. This spot used to be a restaurant called Square Waffle back in the day, but the owner, the owner actually burnt it down. I don't think business was going too well. We actually ate here a couple of times and it wasn't that bad, so it was a bit of a bummer when he burnt it down. That was back in 2013, so 2020 now, it burnt down in 2013. That's seven years it's been sitting abandoned like this. It hasn't always been so full of grass and weeds and stuff. It used to be a lot smoother, believe it or not, but this is the state it's at today. Let's enter the slab here and uh, have a look around. I'm just gonna start from the quarter pipe, guys. So I think this was DIY Diaries episode four. We did the quarter pipe. It took over three or four days because of the rain and whatnot. Got that sorted out. That wasn't the first thing we built here though. The first thing we built was a curb, but we'll get to that later. We built this in DIY Diaries episode two, I believe. Just a standing cinder block ledge. Bit of uh, angle iron here. We've cut off that frame over there. Works pretty well. And then we have the China gap here also. This was DIY Diaries episode five, I believe. We got this knocked out. It rained that day as well, so that took a couple of days. As you can see, half the floor here is tiled and the other half is just a concrete slab. So I've had to come along with a few bags of cement and patch this up so you can roll up it and you don't have to bonk up it. This side turned out a lot better than the other side. I did this in one go, it took me like 40 minutes and the other side I've done three times, I still can't get it right. So this was the actual first thing that was installed here up at the slab. I actually pulled this curb myself, so I had the help of a mate, we got this poured. I think I left it for about three or four days before we pulled it out of the mold, painted it, chucked it on top of some cinder blocks and glued it all down. So this was the first feature here at the slab. This is the OG slab first piece. Since then, we pretty much got this rail knocked out. Had a friend of mine help me out again. So we fabricated this rail, got it dyno bolted into the tile here and then we put this ledge together as well. So all I did was, I think I got about 20 cinder blocks and then I bought a bit of angle iron most of the stuff here, I've used liquid nails to put together, so I haven't had to use concrete only for like the ground. All of the rest of the stuff is glued down with liquid nails, so shouts out to liquid nails. We pretty much got this rail, this ledge, and the pole jam done in one episode. I'll show you guys the pole jam. So this pole jam here actually has a base plate underneath. It comes out about that far. We had bolted it into the ground, but it had snapped out, so we had to kind of chip away at the tile to bolt it right into the slab and then we just cemented over the top to give it that extra bit of strength. The material that we used for this pole jam was sourced from the slab. We just found it laying around and uh, had my mate Daniel cut and shut it on an angle and then we got it bolted in and cemented so it's good as gold. This is so fun to skate as well. Moving along. So thankfully we had this manual pad that was already a part of the slab kind of thing as you guys can see. You can ollie up from the tiled section here pop up, roll along, but where you land is quite rough. This ground down here is quite rough, so eventually I might put some self-leveling cement down. So once you land from the manual pad, you can land or you can go this way as well. Because if you're trying to skate it this way, it's really hard. We got this wedge spine thing built in the last episode of DIY Diary. So if you haven't seen it yet, go and check it out. It only took a day to build, it didn't rain, thankfully. Yeah, super fun to skate. It's portable, so you can move it around the slab and take it wherever you want. Looks like someone's been skating it against here, but this is like super fun. Had a lot of fun building it, had a lot of fun skating it. If you guys didn't know, I actually had a bunch of people donate money for the cement for this slab. So shouts out to everyone that donated. And a friend of mine, Vincent, he actually donated some rails and stuff, including this metal bench. We just sit on it, cause it's too, it's too high to skate. Well, Leon can skate it because he's tall, but we usually use this just as a bench. I've installed a bin. I've got it empty soon, cause it's getting quite full. But this is a flat ground section of the slab. As you can see guys, the ground here is pretty smooth, so it's really good to have a game of skate or warm up or get your flip tricks down. Decent amount of area here to skate in, but yeah, a few boards have shot off the side here. You probably wouldn't want to fall off the edge of the slab because it's about a 12 foot drop to the ground there. And uh, people have, people come down here and push things off the edge and it looks like someone's thrown a rail into that bush there. Probably some young kids. This right here, this is a set of stairs that everyone wants me to clean up to skate, but I just don't think it's worth it because someone's not gonna come here and skate it each time they're at the slab kind of thing. So I just don't see the point, but this is a stair set everyone wants me to clean up for some reason. Now we're entering 
unknown territory for you guys. I don't think you've seen much of around the side of the slab or underneath. There's a fair amount of space back here as well. It's a shame the ground's so rough because it would have been sick to build some stuff down here because it's even further out of the public eye. Yeah, like I said, the ground's rough as guts. I don't imagine anyone's keen to skate on uh, the car park back here. So yeah, you guys follow me around. We have a library here. There's a bunch of books that have been dropped here that someone's dumped. A fair few of these books ended up in the fill of the China Gap. A few people got upset that I used books as fill, but like I said in those videos, guys, half these books are water damaged, and the other half they've been used as kindling to light fires, so, you know, I figured I'd put them to good use. But anyway, let's move on. Quite derelict down here. I've got a couple of mattresses here. I've got no idea where they've come from. There was someone living here. We'll show you that in a second. This place was never this thrash, but over the years, it's just become the local hangout for young teenagers to smoke smoke weed and hang out and whatnot. So it's pretty gnarly down here. So like I said, guys, the owner actually burnt this place down. So this would have been storage, but um, yeah, there's a bunch of dumped rubbish and stuff, some more books, some old records and stuff, just general. What was a jacket here? What kind of jacket is that? Rainbird. Some shelving here. We've got some bits of leftover wood we used for the forms on the uh, China Gap. If anyone does know where this spot is and they want to come skate, more than welcome to come skate. But if you just go walking around downstairs, just be very careful because there are syringes littered everywhere down here. So I'd hate to know that one of you guys got pricked by a used syringe down here. As you guys can see, more fire damage, more destruction. A lot of uh, drywall here. I think this was a back office because it has a safe. There's a safe here. Someone's had a crack at it already. Doubt there's anything in it. But yeah, it's just more fire damaged kind of stuff under here. And then we've got a fridge. Oh, a freezer here. We've just got some graffiti. We've got the wheelbarrow we use. Um, some old magazines. A lighter. A pair of dirty undies, a bong, that's about it. Oh, got a can of crunch, look. Anyone that knows anything about Australian graffiti, they will know that crunch paint was like one of the best things to come out of Australia, graffiti-wise. Awesome brand of paint, they don't make it anymore. Ooh. Like I said, guys, you gotta watch your footing down here. Looks like another freezer in here. Some more stuff, some... Oh, we've got a menu, look at that. Half a square waffle menu. I, I don't think they had any vegan options though back in the day, but they had some... I used to come here before I was a vegan. So, what did we get? Where are the desserts? Here are desserts. I'm not sure what the desserts going for. 10 bucks. This is probably why this place went out of business. If you're charging 10 bucks for like a decent sized dessert, it's too cheap, you've got to put your prices up. But yeah, as you can see guys, $10, you can get a orange panna cotta waffle, butterscotch pudding waffle, vanilla poached pear waffle. It's a whole bunch. That's really cheap for a dessert. Come through this way guys, we've got another freezer. Bit echoey in here. A lot of people have asked to build skating stuff down here, like put a ramp in or a rail, but you can't because it's, it's pitch black in here guys. So give you guys an idea of how dark it is. I'll turn my light off for a second. Can't see a thing. So this one might have been the kitchen down here then. Because up top was just like a, a serving room, I think. Someone was living here. Uh, this is his, his dorm here. He's got his single mattress, some Nutri-Grain, some cigarette butts, a Sharps disposal unit, a couple books, just a bunch of random rubbish around here, some clothes, suitcase. It's a high-biz jacket. I don't know why that's wrapped in plastic, but yeah. I don't think he's here living anymore because I haven't seen him in like two months almost. It's not the most safest place to walk around, so I don't recommend coming in here. Oh, they've cleaned up in here a bit. So right here, guys, this is a spot where all the young local stoners like to come and smoke weed and hang out and listen to music and stuff. Things light and tasty. That's a stoner food right there. You're only buying this food if you're stoned. Yeah, this is where people hang out and smoke weed and stuff. We've never really had a problem with them. They've always been kind of cool with us, so, you know, we're cool with them too. This place was a lot worse and they've cleaned it up a little bit by the looks of it. I wonder if my bags are cement. Yeah. Not much else in here. Got my bags of cement stored. Whoop. 
tucked in away from the rain and that takes us back to the set of stairs here i really wanted to um i really wanted to cut this rail out and then build like a rail with it like a feature but um could possibly still do it i'm just not sure how this would be sick on the other side of the manual pad so when you come down hit this rail that could be a video i'm not sure but yeah as you guys can see just more rubbish <coughs> So that pretty much takes us back up to the top of the slab here. There's a lot of long grass down here and a couple of fences that we cut up to use as rebar. I don't like going walking around in here because your clothes just get so full of farmer's friends and it's really hard to take them off. That's pretty much it for the slab guys. I mean I've taken you across the whole top, down the side, underneath. That's pretty much it. There's a motel next door here, the Hermitage Motel. I feel like they should add on their Travago page that there's a DIY skate park next door. Might boost their uh, their bookings maybe, who knows. In the afternoon, it's really cool because the sun sets behind those hills just here. And there's a nice glow, golden hour effect on the slab. It's really fun to skate around with your mates when it's uh, golden hour up here. There's so many people that have commented, asked like, what happens when they knock it down or when the council finds out or, you know. We've even had Ralph from next door come up and tell us that they're going to bulldoze this place next month and build apartments and whatnot. But like I said, guys, the owner of the restaurant here, he burnt it down. It's an insurance job. So the bank now owns this property. They're holding it at a loss because no one's going to buy it. What do you guys reckon I should start a GoFundMe and buy this slab off the bank? You think it would work? <laughs> Who's keen to donate so we can buy this place, turn it into a real park? Donate about half a million dollars. Yeah, about 500K. As you guys can see, all that's left of the old square waffle here is this sign behind me. I should really get up there and write the slab on it. What do you guys reckon? A lot of you guys keep asking how I found this place. Like I said, I've known about it since 2013. As you can see, it's a very busy road here behind me. And this spot's kind of hidden in plain view. Unless you're driving into Campbelltown and you're looking, you won't find it. What's really funny, guys, is if you guys can see this big green building behind me, me and my mate Zach were going in there taking photos and stuff, and that's where we were going to originally build a DIY but it ended up getting shut down because someone bought it. So it's kind of ironic how we just had to go next door to find a spot. If you guys are familiar with my channel at all, I did make it ledge in a different spot. It's in an abandoned mall or a semi-abandoned mall. That mall is not abandoned anymore. Like people are building on that site right now. They're gonna make it high rise apartment. So I decided not to build there. And I've heard of people going there skating and getting fined. So if you guys are gonna go and skate there, just watch out for the cops. That pretty much brings us to the end of the DIY slab tour i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope i covered everything in this video had to do a lot of talking if you want to keep up to what i'm doing head on over to instagram follow me at enuckism i usually post a lot more over there until next time guys cheers for watching the video and i'll catch all of you all in the next one tonight on unsolved mysteries <laughs>